Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today's the last day of the year, and I want to take some time to look back at 2019. This has been an interesting year for gamers. We're on the last leg of the current generation of consoles. Battle Royales have kind of solidified their place in the world with Fortnite still at the top. Death Stranding pissed off a lot of people. Respawn made one of the best single player Star Wars games ever, despite EA's 2017 cancellation of its other Star Wars games stating that people don't really enjoy linear single player games. Activision made another Call of Duty game and I didn't hate it. Blizzard pissed off most of the world by overly punishing a pro Hong Kong Hearthstone player and adjacent casters. Battlefield 5 was unable to follow in the footsteps of Battlefield 4 and is unfortunately still riddled with bugs in many problem areas over a year after its release. Someone made a weird video game where you basically have to Metal Gear your way around levels but as a goose? And it's also good? I ended up getting addicted to a Russian made free to play naval combat game that I actually enjoy more than Battlefield 5. 2019 has been weird, let's talk about it. First and foremost, I've always been a Battlefield super fan. I built this channel on Battlefield, I've played the franchise ever since it was even a thing, and well, Battlefield 5 has been a huge letdown for the player base over the last year. Even with the negative pushback that Battlefield 1 got, I could still play the heck out of the game. It had vision, clear design choices, and good polish. Battlefield 5 has been a lesson in how not to make a game. Like, seriously, if you need three years to make a good game, then take three years. Don't rush it out in 18 months. The community has been paying for it ever since release, and DICE has dug themselves into a hole that will be very hard to climb out of. On the other hand, Battlefront 2 has delivered some great content this year and really transformed itself into a game that developers can be proud of. So on one side of the DICE equation, you have an awesome comeback story. And on the other side, you have a massive disappointment with Battlefield. And it's not to say that Battlefield 5 can't be fun. It's really more of a comparison between what I know Battlefield can be and what it is now. So if Battlefield 5 was your first Battlefield game, you might actually be perfectly fine not realizing just how good previous titles have been and how far this game has fallen. If only I had that same level of ignorance, I could maybe stop comparing this game to its predecessors. This year's Call of Duty was particularly an important launch for me because Battlefield 5 was failing so hard and COD seemed like it was going to try and appeal more to the Battlefield player base. So I was very happy to hop over to a game that filled that tactical team-based shooter niche. And despite the game being very good at what it does, it made me realize that even an excellent Call of Duty game is no replacement for even a poor Battlefield game. The ground war game mode didn't bring any of the strategy or teamwork that I missed from Battlefield and instead did what COD does best, which is fast, hectic action with strategy and teamwork as a distant afterthought. Again, I don't really want to bag on Call of Duty because I generally think it's a good game and the new ground war mode is enjoyed by many. It just wasn't really what I was looking for. So in my search to find a game to fill that tactical teamwork void, I stumbled back into World of Warships. A free to play game that I had only played lightly in the past all of a sudden became something that I got caught up in. It's a game that lures you in with simplistic action at lower tiers of combat and then slaps you across the face with a never ending knowledge curve as you start to hit mid and upper ranks. A seemingly simplistic game with unending depth and progression was exactly what I needed to console my battlefield woes. Also, I know a lot more about World War II naval combat now than I ever did before, and I actually really enjoy learning about it. The details from each conflict are all logged and recorded by the minute so that historians can quite literally write out a play-by-play -play of almost every naval engagement that occurred during the war. Except for, of course, the ones where data was lost with the ships going down. And I think it's really great when a game can inspire you to want to learn a bit more about history so you can understand the context of what you're doing in a game a little bit better or maybe just appreciate some of the things. Now, when it comes to Total Fantasy, 2019 was also really weird for Star Wars. Battlefront 2 continued to produce great content and expand its feature list. Jedi Fallen Order was a welcome surprise, creating its own little pocket of a side story to the events after Order 66. And then of course we got The Mandalorian TV show, which was campy but also a lot of fun. 
Also, I think Baby Yoda should become a playable hero in Battlefront 2, but that's just me. And then to finish things off, we also got the Rise of Skywalker finale to the new trilogy, which is... Well, I think it's a lesson to movie makers that if you're planning on making a trilogy, maybe plan to make a trilogy instead of writing one script after another by different writers, all with their own ideas about what Star Wars is supposed to be. What a disaster of a trilogy. Star Wars deserves much better in my opinion, and ironically the game industry delivered that better than the film industry could. I'm excited to see what the Clone Wars TV show delivers next, providing I'm willing to cough up another Disney Plus subscription, which of course I canceled immediately after The Mandalorian concluded. They should just really change the name to Star Wars Streaming Platform and be done with it. Now, around July of 2019, I had another gaming love affair with a game called Anno 1800. Now, if you've played the Anno games, you're probably familiar with this one. It's an 1800s city and empire building game. My first PC game that I ever purchased was SimCity 2000, which I played way back in 1993. And I probably sank more time into that game than just about anything else. Playing Anno 1800 was sort of like rediscovering that joy, but with a wonderful era appropriate soundtrack and beautiful graphics. I haven't met a single person who's played this game and didn't love it, and I highly recommend it to anyone looking for a great game to just build cities, trade routes, and occasionally wage naval warfare on your opponents. Another game that I'm still quite fond of, but for different reasons, Star Citizen made some incredible strides this year. Yes, yes, pipe dream, never gonna happen, blah, 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 blah. I know all the anti-Star Citizen rhetoric out there, but what actually happened this year is that they accomplished one of their most impressive and insane goals of creating procedurally generated city planets that look amazing and function in the persistent universe. The really cool aspect of achieving this is that it just gives everybody who's been following the project a lot of hope for the finale of the game. If they've been able to achieve one of the most difficult things already, then what's stopping them from doing the rest? Their funding certainly hasn't slowed down, and sure, the game is still very buggy and for the most part a glorified tech demo and screenshot generator, but you know what? I've got a lot of hope for it. There's been a huge amount of progress with the development team, progress on the projects. Squadron 42, the single player component looks extremely cool. They just released a, a little teaser trailer of all the stuff that's coming with it. And I'm still very excited and hyped. I can't say that I'm spending a lot of time in the game right now, since it's not really that much of a game for the most part, but I am still very much excited to play a more polished product once it arrives, and certainly the single player component. And for those of you who perhaps don't want to take the Star Citizen plunge, or maybe just see a little bit more of what the game is about, or some of these awesome features I'm talking about, check out the video I made on the Star Citizen City Planets. I'll have that linked in the video description. Speaking of which, one thing I like to do at the end of the year is recommend some of the videos I've made throughout the year that I think are worth going back and watching if you haven't seen them already. Uh, one of which I would say is a Battlefield 5 Forgotten Features video. I put this video together to talk about some of the innovations and cool features that previous Battlefield titles had made to the franchise that we no longer have in the current games. This is both to remind the community of what we once had and hopefully to remind the developers of what we once had in Battlefield and perhaps inspire them to reintegrate some of those features to the current game or even the next game. I think it's an interesting video and I like going back and sort of seeing that previous games actually had a lot of cool innovations that we seem to have forgotten about. Another video that I would recommend checking out is the video I made about cheaters in video games. It's centric around the Battlefield franchise to a bit, but really applies to just about every video game out there. It gets into the history of it, sort of what drives it a bit, uh, potential solutions to the problem, and how long we've been dealing with it. I think it's a really interesting subject matter just because it is sort of this uncontrollable force that the game industry may never get a true grasp on. Another video that I really felt compelled to make last year was talking about the correlation that politicians make between violent video games and mass shootings in the United States. This is certainly a bit more of a US-centric video, but 
It's a really important issue that keeps coming up time and time again. We have a huge problem in the US with mass shootings and politicians constantly deflect and try and blame other things like violent video games. And I just made a whole video breaking down the arguments about it, the history of that uh, deflection, how much it's happened in the past. And I, I think it's a really interesting and important subject matter. The last video I'd like to recommend today is simply my World of Warships review from 2019. The game's been out for quite a while, but I felt compelled to make a review of the video game, talk about why I liked it, talk about some of the problems with it, of course, and just give a good overall overview of the game. The reason behind that being is that personally, I've never been that interested in naval combat, and yet I find World of Warships to be one of the most enjoyable games that I've played in a long time, and I kind of wanted to talk about that and give the game a proper review. So for anyone out there who is probably thinking the same thing I was, it's like, I'll never play a Warships video game. I'm much more into shooters or this or that. It might be worth checking out and, you know, maybe not closing yourself off to a game that could actually really appeal to you. Anyway, I hope you guys have an excellent new year. I'll see you guys in it. I've got some big plans for 2020. There's a lot of crazy things going on in my life, which I'll be happy to fill you guys in once we get there. And I'll see you guys next time, or rather in the new year. This is Level Cap signing off.